Hey there, how's it going? So recently I got an email from one of my course students asking how we can create this form using auto layout. I'm here to deliver, so let's do it. So here I've got a brand new Xcode project. We're in the storyboard. I'm gonna show you how to build a form using stack views. So first we're going to search for stack view. We're gonna use a vertical stack view. And then we are going to I just add a margin to it, all four sides. Doesn't really matter what you put right now, that can be adjusted later. But the strategy we're going to take is each row in this form is going to be a horizontal stack view containing a label and a text field. And then, so there are going to be five of these horizontal stack views. All of them are going to be put together into a vertical stack view. So, so far we have the vertical stack view. I'm just going to rename it here so it's easy for you to see. I'm going to drag this horizontal stack view into the vertical stack view so you have something that looks like that. And maybe we'll just call this like row stack view. And then next we want to add a label and a text field. Now I'm not going to drag it into the storyboard because it might be a little hard to see. Um, I'm going to drag it directly into the document outline. Next, search for text field, put it in there. Now you should have something that looks like this. When you collapse the row stack view, it should contain those two elements. And when you collapse the vertical stack view, uh, the horizontal one should be tucked into it. Now what this gives us is one row and it's stretched out for the entire length of the vertical stack view. I'm actually gonna give a height to this row stack view because even though I give it a height, it's still going to work for multiple orientations because as the screen gets wider, it's going to stretch widthwise, but I don't necessarily want it to get taller like it does now. This looks ridiculous, right? To have a text field that tall. So I'm going to click on the row stack view and I'm going to add a height to it. I'm just going to uh, make it 30. So notice that I'm adding the height constraint to the row stack view and not the text field itself. This way, both the label and the text field inside will conform to this height that I've set on the horizontal stack view. The next thing I want to do is highlight this row stack view. I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times and you can do that by pressing command D. So I'm going to do it four more times because we have a total of five rows. And now I'm going to highlight these four and I'm going to drag it underneath the vertical stack view. Now you have to be careful not to drag it into the wrong place. But if you do, you can just uh, rearrange it again. So now we have all five row stack views inside this vertical stack view. And there are a whole bunch of errors, but don't worry about them for now. And uh, the next thing we want to do is add some spacing between each row stack view. So let's go ahead and change the spacing on the vertical stack view. So let's just say 10. And for each uh, horizontal stack view, I want to add some space between the label and the text field. So I'm just going to highlight them all like that and hit 10 for the spacing. So now we get something that looks like this. Uh, the next thing we want to do is going to be customizing the text of the labels to match this. So we have host, port, username, password, and type. And then we're also going to fill in some of these. Now this is a placeholder text. This is an actual piece of text in this text field. Uh, placeholder, placeholder, and nothing in here. So host, port, username, password, and type. So let's see if I can remember this. We've got host, and the text field is 10.10.10.10 uh, .10 or me.mine.com. Now you can't see that placeholder text there right now, but it is there. When you run it in the simulator, you'll see it. This is port and the actual text. So don't put it in placeholder text. Was zero. Uh, this guy was username. Don't worry that the text fields are of different sizes and widths. This placeholder text was admin. This label was password. And this placeholder text was couple of stars. Make sure you also enable secure text entry for the password and you can see that it's indicated by that dot there. This label was type and there was no placeholder text or default text. Now we want to make sure that all of these text fields are aligned and the same width. So what we do is we take the uh, the label with the longest width. So that would be username and we're going to 
have all of these other labels have equal widths with the username label. So an easy way to do that is hold down control on this host label, click and drag, and you're gonna see this blue line, drag it to the username label, let go, and you're gonna be able to select equal widths. And as you can see there, the host label has an equal width with the username label now, and then the text fields will be aligned. So we're gonna do the same thing with port, equal widths, and password. Make sure you're selecting the right element. It's really easy to get confused here and accidentally select the wrong one. And if you do, then you can simply look for the constraint in here and then delete it. All right, so now we have this form here and we can view it in a couple of different orientations maybe. Let me zoom out so we can do that. You can see here that uh, I want the width to stretch, but I don't necessarily want the text fields to get taller. That's why I have that height constraint there. So you can see that even on smaller screen sizes, Okay, so even on an iPad, it would look like that where the text fields are stretching. Now, one thing is if we wanted the, um, let me change the device back to an iPhone first. If we wanted this form to be kind of at the bottom, like the, uh, the other screen had, this image I mean, what we could do is actually just remove this constraint that says that this vertical stack view needs to be 20 from the top. If we remove that, then there is no constraint saying that and it can stick at the bottom. Or actually what we could do is take that top constraint and instead of deleting it, you can change the relationship. Instead of equals 20, you can say that it can be greater than or equal to and you'll still have this constraint but this will be a flexible constraint so it can be uh, more than 20 but these left right and uh, bottom will be 20. Now if you have the form down here you have to be careful because when you are typing into these text fields you're going to have the keyboard slide up and it's going to cover the form. I'm not going to cover how to animate the form up in this video but I do have another video that talks about that and how to implement that sort of functionality where this form will slide up if the keyboard slides up. So I'll link to that video in the description or you'll see a little banner at the top right now linking you to that exact video to do that functionality. So that's it. If you like this video please subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming tutorials. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.